and Dr. Pearl. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. I was going to get the fax number out, but it fell off the wall. 840 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're not supposed to do it anymore? All right. Oh, well, there you go. You know what I love about this uh, show? Real time, baby. You don't give out that fax number, you find out after the show began. Do we have a fax number? It's just not happening. No, we're anymore. gonna switch to we're gonna switch to emails and message boards and that kind of oh, thing. Oh, I've been doing that. <laughs> I've been communicating with the kids for years know, that way. And I'm gonna pull up my computer. You'll love that. Fantastic. Makes you very happy. I know. People are uh, people. I don't think people believe me. They go, uh, "What's your address?" Uh huh. Email. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, email. I'm like, huh? No, 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 nothing, nothing. My favorite. I don't, I don't know anything. Yeah, Adam. That would that would be fine. Thank uh, you. That's okay. Thank but you. The fact that you buy multi thousand dollars with the computer equipment that never been had the on switch pressed. Yeah, but listen, when the maid comes to my house it's important for her to think I'm a yeah, heavy hitter. I know. Speaking of heavy hitters, uh, Bob Guccione Junior is gonna be in here tonight. He was the uh, former editor in chief of Spin magazine. Found out he sold that baby for forty three million bucks. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, well, not now. I mean, he did both at the same time, right? Gear's been around for a few years. I remember the, he was here with last when they were launching this, remember? Mm. Well, it was just, I was just getting going, kind of. Bob Guccione Jr.'s been on the show, I think, a couple of times. Yeah. And last time he was here, Gear was in full effect because he was here probably less than a year ago. Oh. No? More than a year ago? And? Did we have a fax machine when he was here last? And when was Bob Guccione last year? Like about two years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two years? Yeah. Geez, I would have said a year. Well, see what happens. You're never wrong, so it's probably... No, no, you take those painkillers and wash them out with booze every night in the time. <laughs> Zips on by. That's right. All right, we will uh, go to the phone. So Bob should be in here any moment now. We'll talk to him about uh, Gear, which is a, a great, great magazine for men. Although I don't believe men should be reading. Jenny is uh, 22. What's up? Hi. Hey. I had sex with my boyfriend a couple hours ago. You had sex? Went, yeah. Yes. And okay. I wanted him to stop, and he didn't. And we didn't talk about it yet. I left really upset and mad, and he doesn't... I don't think he exactly knows why, because we didn't speak about it, but it brought up some bad issues for me, and Ooh. I don't know... This was your first time having sex with him? No, no, I've been with him for two and a half years. What happened this time? I just, I wasn't in the mood anymore. And how... It wasn't enough, like, foreplay, and I had to pee, so, like, the lower part of my stomach was hurting. Mm. Mm. This is the, the guy, this, listen, you got to appeal to guys in a very, sort of, matter-of-fact, rational way. i, I got to pee. I, I think right. that might have got him to stop. Uh, listen, I use number two. That <laughs> gets them off. Good. That'll get them off okay. you a lot faster than pee. But it made you feel powerless, huh, Jenny? It, I, it just right, got brought you. up some bad yeah. things for me. Well, but usually the experience is that of being completely out of control and powerless. Right. You were you were raped before, molested? No, I was in a, an abusive relationship with an older guy, and at the end of our relationship, I wasn't on the pill anymore, and we would have sex, and I would tell him, you have to pull it out, I'm not on the pill anymore, and he wouldn't. What in my it? eyes, that's still rape. Yeah, that's abuse, right. So... My current boyfriend knows all about what I've. What happened through. before that? Where where was the abuse sort of started? The cycle of this victimization. You mean like in my last relationship? Or? No. Yeah. No, that's exactly what we mean. We're talking about six months ago, honey, not sixteen years ago. Right. Right. Um, what, what happened sixteen years ago? Well, I I used to live with my mom, and she was like verbally abusive like she'd go out all night and party and i'm like i was 10 years old at the time i'd wake up for school the next morning she still wouldn't be home from partying the night before all right so, so finally i got out of that i moved in with my dad now i'm happier than how right, so mom was abusive and abandoning and awful okay yeah. all right trying to get our relationship back together and okay. that's going a little good but i still have issues all right listen a little therapy a little work don't get pregnant and i don't trust this guy because you picked him yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bob Guccione Jr. just walked in, so we had to wrap it up. Hey, guys. Hey, hey Bob. Bob. How you doing? Good. Good, Good. Good to see you. And uh, congratulations on uh, gear. What what year are we in with gear? Uh, 200. <laughs> no, it's... I thought you meant <laughs> two and half, It feels like 200 years. Let me tell you. Two and a half years. See? We're, we're in the third year. What do you mean, C? I said it'd just be going a few months when he was last year. That's right. Now, I, I think he came back again in between the time he got Maybe. it going and the time in, in He's today. sitting here. You care to ask him? 
I don't like to talk to the guests, Drew. <laughs> Drew, ask He's, Bob. He speaks the, only through a medium. Yes, yeah, me. Drew, ask yeah. Bob the last time he was in studio. Bob, last time you were here? About two years ago. Two years ago. Holy Thank you very much. Oh, oh, Adam, by the way, has never been wrong until no, tonight. Until tonight. Well, now, you know, I can't honestly remember. I, I, I think it, it's over a year at least. Yeah, I think it's nearly two. You were just starting um, your dot com. Mm. Has this so was about a year and a half ago? Yeah, a year and a half ago, we were going to hook up and we got right. a chance to. That's so it's right. about a year and a half ago, yeah. All right, well, somewhere. But I still have fond way. memories and, and and the occasional nightmare about being here. Tell me, well, here comes the nightmare, <laughs> brother. Uh, <laughs> this guy, I'm I'm working on the uh, back at work at the Man Show now, and the gear is uh, required reading for uh, everyone in the office. I see uh, hundreds of these things floating around. Uh, all the time, and it's great just to uh, browse through. Obviously, if you're not, uh, if you have a short attention span like me, and you're not much of a reader, it's uh, great to look at. And uh, the articles are short and concise, and uh, they get to the point. And they got a lot of cool stuff. Like uh, Drew was looking at the uh, real doll in there, which is a uh, six thousand yeah, dollar uncanny, doll. Huh? Uncanny. Is this Bobcat's yeah, it, wife? Yes, it spooked, yeah. uh, spooked uh, Drew out. Yeah. Drewy. <laughs> Spook Drew out. Nicky Cox you know, is on you know, the cover Since of this we're on month, radio, right? no one can see the fact that we've Doesn't changed matter. from real dolls to Nicky Cox. Bobcat is not in fact engaged to a real doll. Yeah. Well, let me explain mm -hmm. the, the wonder. Let me explain the wonder and magic of Dr. Drew. As I launch into the real doll thing, which he was <laughs> looking at and marveling at ten minutes ago before we went on the air, he then shows me another picture and asks if this is Bobcat's wife. That's right. That's great radio, <laughs> Drew. Yeah. This is the part where you're supposed to chime in and say, you know what, Adam, not only that, but... I was just looking at that, and you're so right, and let me go on and tell you about this real doll, but not Drew. No, not me. All right. Now, what about this real doll, Drew? Did you find it again? Did the real doll Did you have thing? some thoughts about it? No, I just, it was bizarre. They like made to order dolls. I mean, did it's you think uncanny you how lifelike they are. Did you see this thing? Have you, have you been to their little factory? No, no, but when I had... Um, uh, the photographs were in my office, and one of the editors came in looking Here. looking for the Look, photographs. These are dolls. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I jacked off to that picture, and then I found out there were dolls, and I felt like I was raped. I felt raped. I, felt I really felt violated. I want my semen back. Yeah, Bob, where I do only they, wish I could give it back to you. Where do they... Oh, you will. Oh, yes. Where do they manufacture these things, you I mean, know? I think it's Germany, right? Uh, I didn't read the article. I, I did read it. I can't remember. I think it was Germany. No, that, that makes but sense. They're, they're they're so lifelike that when the pictures were in my office, mm -hmm. an editor came in looking for them, and he said, "Where are the real doll pictures?" And I said, they're "Over there." He goes, "Wow, these girls are hot. Where are the real doll pictures?" I said, "No, they are the dolls. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's freaky. I mean, they're six thousand dollars, but they're really." So lifelike, huh? it's unbelievable. Well, listen, one of uh, Drew Strumpets runs at least that for the weekend. So what's, it, a, what's a strumpet? And she's really a lifelike. It would pay for itself in just a matter of weeks. But you know something I was thinking about, uh, Bob, on the ride over, I was thinking that the sort of the pinup girl is back, in a sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, it used to be like... I'm not a moment too soon. Right, Drew, when we were coming up, it was either Playboy or sort of TV. Yeah. Th there wasn't really the pinup girl thing. Like well, either it was National Geographic. Yeah, I mean, either you were getting nude or you're down by the river with a bone through your lip. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? We didn't really have. If if there were celebrities that we wanted to see scantily clad, we couldn't really find that. Right. And th this is nice. And all these women, even these women that have. These sort of squeaky clean images, these, you know, Sabrina the Teenage uh, Witches and these uh, Jennifer Love Hewitts and types like this, they're all getting in line to pose for the magazine. Absolutely. And uh, I, I guess it's a career. I, I guess every woman wants to be sexy, and this is a legitimate way to do it. But that's true. It's legitimate. You know, I, I mean, think, because uh, it, it's attractive, it's sexy. Don't you think the Sports Illustrated thing. swimsuit and magazine had something to do with people, the crossover. With their, people with their clothes yeah. on coming back? And I told my father in 1984 to take the nudes out of Penthouse. And he said, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not. Sports Illustrated outsells Penthouse and Playboy with its swimsuit issue. Right. I said, they want, m m the sexual revolution is over. It's right. been won. We won. You know, we can, we can have it. You right. Know? It's, it's, it's free. It's liberated. Um, but people want mystery. Right. And, and and that was true in 1984. It's ever more true nearly 20 years later. Yeah. And and so the uh, the women who were you know TV stars, they want to be thought of sexy. They certainly don't, and and rightly so, don't want to be necessarily parading around nude and and have their photographs uh, all over the place. So they they want it, that that in between area. Right. I wonder if the mystery has anything to do with the propensity now to see urine. 
<laughs> in these magazines. <laughs> I, I've never been that keen on no. urine myself. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Where, where's this? Where have you seen urine in the magazine? This is Adam claims. Oh. This is scratch and sniff. Uh, Hustler, Hustler, what? Hustler Penthouse has a, oh, has yeah. a fair amount sure. of Hustler, sure. urine okay. urine in it. Uh, I, there's there's <laughs> Urine is popping Hustler's up. Hustler printed with urine. Yes, they actually use a urine-based ink. Urine, You're right. Urine-based ink, yeah. From pregnant mares. It, it is uh, something that has popped up in the harder core magazines, the edgier magazines, and I, know, I don't understand it because I can't imagine a majority of American men being into people being urinated on, but it's, I, as I was telling uh, Larry Flint, you got to keep going forward. Yeah, if that's and, forward. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I can imagine the minority of American men interested in urine. There's a, there's a... I'm interested in losing some a, of the commercial break, but there's not a, necessarily sharing it. Right, but there's an envelope that needs to be pushed, and I that's guess. pushing it or filling it or doing something on it. Steven? Yeah? You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Uh, okay, well, I've been with my girlfriend for... Actually, she's my fiancé, and uh, I've been with her for a year and three months. And uh, not only will she not have sex, and that's fine, uh, she won't do anything more than kiss. And if I try to talk about it, she gets really uncomfortable. What does she say? She says that she's afraid that it's going to lead to something more, and she's afraid we're going to get... Like marriage? <laughs> well, getting married, have you ever been sexually active with her? Not with her, no. Is she religious? No, it's not a religion thing. Wait, is she a virgin? She is a virgin. Has she ever had any trauma in her life? No, she's never been sexually abused, and she has a, a really stable family life. Well, it's not a religious thing. But what's that weird energy in Steve? I don't know. You get that? Yeah, but I think it's a sort of naive energy. I hope. I just want to put a warning out to our jack-off callers. That the, <laughs> in, any, any male that screws around with us, that's it. Males are out tonight. Okay. Um, I'm put it, we're putting setting limits. Time out to all males. I, if any I, one of you screws around with us tonight, you laid the yeah. gauntlet yeah, down. Yeah, I'm with right? the guys. <laughs> Don't screw around with us, Steven? Yeah. All right. I'm sorry for uh, Drew's warning. Uh, you've only kissed her. Right. You've been with her for over a year. Yeah. You call her your fiance. Yeah. Well, why do you make her your fiance when you've never even been anywhere with her? Well, no, I, I really love her. I mean, it's just that, like, I, you know, I keep expecting things to progress, and they just keep not progressing. Well, she has told you they're not going to until you get married, is that right? It's not just the sex, it's like nothing in between, you know? Like nothing in between. I, I understand that in your world, the 19-year-old world, the, the virginity is sort of a technicality, that you're supposed to work around it. <laughs> right. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah, sure. What's wrong with a BJ and some anal? That's right. BJ, <laughs> anal sex, nostril, whatever, that, sure. you know, you're still virgin. And in her mind, maybe the more modern uh, point of view would be that chastity is equivalent to virginity. No, but she sums up with her. She's a modern girl. Well, she, okay, she won't, I, I, I can't even touch her breast outside her clothing. All right. Well, listen, Stephen, did she tell you you could get some after you get married? Yeah, but we can't get married until she graduates. I see. From the junior high or? <laughs> no. No, from college. Uh, all right. Well, listen, Stephen, you have to decide if this is the path you want to go because she's made her intentions clear. She's laid out her sexual schedule, and now you have to respect it and decide: Are you in or are you, are you out? It's like a, it's like a, a job. It's like your boss saying, "You want to work here? Here's the dress code. Here's the hours." You want However, to both of us have the sense that there's some some information missing. Yes, something about her ethnicity or her religious orientation. Something, some piece that would make it all fit together. Right, and he doesn't know it. Right. Well, he's not admitting to it. I don't think he knows it, Aaron. Yes. You're 22. You're on with Bob Guccione, Jr. Hi. Hi. Um, my problem is that I've never been able to have sex without pain. Why? I don't know. Because you were, <laughs> because you were sexually abused when you were a child? No. No, no I wasn't. Because that oh, you heard that call last night, no? With that, we had that discussion? Uh, I, I didn't hear that mm. last night. I'm sorry. And had you, have, you had a pelvic exam? Yes. And you have no problems? No problems at all. And when is the pain? Right when during penetration or? Uh, during. Um, at the moment after, he tries. To, hang yeah. on. Right when he tries to get in, that's where there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, but she said she said during at the beginning and after. Yeah, but but the important yeah. thing is if it starts right at penetration, it will continue throughout. It's the same problem. If it's after penetration that it starts up, it can be something different. Right. Well, all I need is to penetrate, and I'm done. I understand. So that's why I work well with the ladies. But this could be... I don't is, wear them out. Is it, you don't give them any pain, let's say. No, is, I can be the woman for years if vagina is brand new. Yeah. Is, uh, is it a it's burning? A resume. Is it burning or irritated, anything like it, that? Dry? It's more burning. So it, and it's, 
it's not a spasm feeling, not like pain when no. you. It's, no, it's it's like it, only thing I can think to describe is kind of like a like a a, a rug burn. And, and it's inside. Yes. And there's nothing, no allergy to condoms. You're not using condoms. No, I've, I've been on the pill um, since I was 18. Yeah. Have, have you tried changing time. the pill? Yes. Yeah, I changed the prescription twice because mm. my uh, doctor said it could be that. Have you been with the? And this is you've been with one guy for a while too. Still. Um. This. This one guy I've been with him for two years, but it was with that with my last other partner. And no history of trauma. Uh. Well, you said childhood trauma, so I, so I said no. I I was raped when I was in high school. Mm. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, and we would predict there was a little something before that. What happened with the rape? Um, it was. Well, I don't know what even happened. What, um, was it a date rape? Something you knew well, or was it a violent yeah, rape? Yeah, yeah, it was a date rape. Date rape. Yeah, it was a, a boyfriend. Uh, no, no, I, it was. He was just a friend, and. All right, and uh, nothing before that. No. Did you press charges? No, I didn't. Why not? Mm. Oh, uh, Dad was an alcoholic. I no, <laughs> no. Heroin. No. Coke. <laughs> no, no. Why didn't you press charges? The line of question there is why didn't you? Is the result of you not having pressed charges? Why didn't you? I you know I didn't know. I was very confused at the time. Okay. Um, I wasn't exactly even sure what had happened. To be honest with you, mm. and it didn't really occur to me until a couple months later. All right. And yeah. I, what? Was your dad not around when you were growing up? No, no, my my dad's even still around today. I mean, he, he, my parents have been married for twenty six years. All right, everything was good, no substance. Your dad didn't work no. around metal. No. No. All right, all right. Uh, we, the rape thing's a little. There's something connected there, but uh, but it, true. Well, hmm. Why would that um, continue to be painful, physically painful? If the, one of the most common, one of the more common causes of pelvic pain during intercourse is sexual abuse and rape, in our experience, people have called this show, people have been raped, typically had some sort of victimization before that. It's rather unusual for someone to be. And the, our callers that have been raped without previous victimization raise holy hell. They call the police, they call lawyers, they call everybody. Or it was some sort of violent rape where they were attacked in a park and they just, you know, completely out of their control. And so is this, this pain in your mind, is it psychosomatic? Because it can't no, it's, seem to be physical, right? No, it's, that, these are physical pains, but it, your, your brain can induce pain states. Sure, but I mean, it's not like the, it, it doesn't, it's not a disease thing. No, not a disease thing. like a you know, STD. Yeah, but been checked the, off the, the women's genitalia is wired to the brain via their spine, whereas my genitalia is wired to a toaster oven <laughs> via an extension <laughs> cord. You, you switch from the remote control. Yeah. I could be He's watching not a documentary I know him. on the Holocaust and fully enjoy some oral sex. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas a woman, it wouldn't... From a toaster. Yeah, yeah. oral sex from a toaster. Yeah, the, the talking oh, you, you one from the commercial. I was talking to some women about the music they like to hear during sex. And first of all, the whole concept was bizarre to me. And I said, look, it could be the music from Schindler's List. I don't care. Right. Music? What? No, no. Me, the music you like to hear during sex is the stuff that gets her horny. Exactly. A, number one. B, number two, the stuff that drowns it out so your roommate or folks or whoever don't catch on. That's what music during sex is for guys. And women are much more connected. And if they, they get emotionally, it's going to shut those sense. parts down. And there's no, with, with women, too, when it comes to this, uh, this uh, intimacy, the, the line is blurred between the emotional and the physiological. It's it's one. Mm -hmm. There's actual pain. Yeah. I'd like I mean, to try it sometime. Just, you know, as a social experiment, <laughs> Drew. See if we can get you raped in the next couple of months. Oh, I thought you were going to rape you. Oh, either way. Oh, boys. Either way. You, bring, you, you can sort it out. Bring some of that medical. Take turns. Bring that medical grade Coke you get, you're always talking about. Rub a little of that on me. <laughs> so I don't feel the pain. Robert? Uh, hello? You're 15. What's up? Hey, what's up, Adam? Hey. Um, like every like two or three times a week, my testicles will start hurting for no reason. Two mm -hmm. or three times a week. Yeah. Fifteen. The reason may be because you are fifteen. Yeah. Are, are you masturbating regularly? Uh, yeah. How regularly? Like two or three times a day. Yeah. Are you masturbating now? No. <laughs> okay, just checking. Maybe you're overdoing it. Like, you think I should stop? Yeah. It could, there are lots of well, not stop. 
I know it's not much chance of that anyway, but there there are things that can happen. You can get inflammation in the epididymis, epididymitis, and you get prostate inflammation. Why don't you uh, cut down to once a day and see what happens? Right. Okay. And do, are you using any weird creams or anything? Uh, no. -uh. Things that could irritate the urethra. And you're not doing any, no weird habits, no weird rituals around all this? No. -uh. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm, by the way, on my uh, 37th <laughs> hour without masturbating. <laughs> yeah. what, is okay. what is this, a telethon? Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Jay, let's check the tote board. <laughs> well, 37, oh, almost 38 hours with no uh, masturbation. Very impressive. I mean, yeah. How many years? And this is this is a personal record. Yeah, I'm on a, a personal bet. I'm on a run here. Yeah. I cannot masturbate until tomorrow around one in the afternoon when I get my sperm tested. So this He's is uh, giving a specimen tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. Who to? Uh, some dude. <laughs> this guy. No, I'm doing a little competition with uh, Jimmy, my partner from the uh, Man Show. We're going to see whose sperm is better, basically. And they tell you you got to wait two days in order to get it up to speed. And uh, to me, do you have your eye on Jimmy at all times? Make sure he's not like faking this somehow. You mean uh, like you know, substituting sperm, smuggle younger sperm guys' in. sperm, yeah, smuggling yeah, sperm? Right. In. He has a uh, he, he, interns on the show. Some that's young a good, stud. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, he could have some uh, like cornerback from the NFL, some twenty-two-year-old guy straight out of college who runs a four-four forty. Yeah, and you're right. Yeah, I keep my eye on him. I did actually. We think both of, know Jimmy. I did think about smuggling sperm into the uh, spankatorium and bringing it out with me. <laughs> I did. The other thing is, oh, Drew, you would love this. Spank we're having, we're having a competition to see who finishes first. Yeah. And uh, we're doing a Le Mans type start where we run for the bathroom. Is there going to be a checker flag at the end? Cousin Sal, yes, has made his way around the man show office and is putting bets down. Oh, He's, I'm sure of that. People are taking bets like it's a Super Bowl. I, I want in. What you about? want in? You yeah. got to talk to Cousin Sal. I, I, I know you have the eye of the ninja. Yeah. You know, I'm the odds on favorite, but, yeah. but Jimmy's a sleeper. They don't realize that what he's got, which is not getting laid in high school. Any guy who didn't get <laughs> an ounce of ass in high school is a masturbatory ninja. I mean, that's where you hone your it's craft. Zen at that point. It is zen. Yeah. It, it, masturbation is not much different than golf in that if you start early and do it often, you'll be good your whole life. You'll always be better than a guy like skiing, who picks riding it up. a bike. Yeah. And right. a guy who picks it up later Swimming. in life. Right. Nice, right. Adam. Nice. What guy picks that up later in life? Masturbation? Yeah. Well, there, there's... People there's, have had a bad accident certain, in high school. Yeah. Guy could have been in a bad, bad accident. <laughs> no, no, there could be... Let's say Late a, bloomers. Let's say there's a guy who has a girlfriend all through high school and is just He's getting steady ass all the way through high yeah. school. He will not masturbate. He has nothing to apologize for. Yeah, but he, he'll not. He, oh, he's paying now, though. He's lost <laughs> He's lost his edge. All right, Bob Guccione Jr. is our guest. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, editor-in-chief of Gear Magazine. We'll take ourselves a little break. We'll be back after this. It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Bob Guccione Jr. is here. He, of course, is the editor of uh, Gear Magazine. And uh, how's your dad doing? Uh, he's doing okay. What, what do you... Uh, uh, Bob Guccione Sr. is uh, the penthouse guy. He also... Did he do We? No, no, that was oh Playboy did We. A oh, Playboy did remember? We. Is that not still around, is it? Yeah, no, no, long gone. Oh, my 70s. God. Yeah. The classic. Oh, yeah. That's really where... Oh, my God. It may actually still be around because Playboy or, sold it years ago. Or as I heard people talking about it in the New York street cities in New York. Oh, yeah, Oh, yeah. I want the gun be that. Oh, yeah. Ooh wee! I did myself good to that oil last night. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that was not. <laughs> what, what other? Uh, in, uh, you and your dad have sort of gone back and forth over the years, right? Yeah, I, I wish it was more of that. It's, it's been really sort of fifteen years of not talking to each other. I've tried very hard to. Really? You have, you have other siblings? Yeah. How many? Uh, I have uh, three. Uh, two younger brothers and a younger sister. And they have relationships that are good. One doesn't. Uh, one has a sort of medium relationship. My sister's very close to him. Well, what, what's so, your dad's? I, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know all the details, but why? What's your dad's beef now? I mean, if you're trying to, I don't even remember. Contact, contact, you know what? Years, I, let, I let me, let me, let me just from, give you the the thirty thousand foot view. I don't know him at all, but but when there's one in and the rest are kind of out, yeah. Usually, you have to completely subjugate yourself to that person, and usually, one of the children are willing to do it, and they become the the idealized one, and and, be, and become right. the one that splits her, the the father or mother against all the other kids. Right. 
I see. So, so you got going, meaning huh? Bob Guccione Sr. is a guy who needs his he needs kids to treat him like a daddy or like a ruler. Yes. Yeah. And, like and, and that's not, the kids can't do that. You can't grow up and do that. You have, would, you have who to would want their kids to do that? But you can't. In order for you to be a person, you have to get away from that. You have to. I'd be, I'd be proud of my kids if they were their own Of parents. course. But that's, he doesn't, he can't yeah. handle it. Of course, that I say that and I must now correct the record. I don't have kids, so I can't say. Uh, that I have all the answers about that. I hope to have kids, and I hope when I have them, they're independent little son of a bitches, and they 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 leave home at sixteen. And but to see that that's know. a compensation for what you had to deal with, which was yeah. Oh. I don't know. I think that's great. Yeah, I do too. You know? I'm with you. I, I, I had a girlfriend once who was a single mother, and uh, I met her just after she'd given birth, so I knew the kid from three months old. And she was she, she and I should have hooked up. We just didn't, but we should have. This was 1991, and. Um, I said to her, well, you know, why not? She says, well, I've got, to, I've got to stay with the father for the kid's sake. I said, look at the child. Look, he's crawling away from you at all times. Mm -hmm. His impetus is to get away. And Even at three months, he wants to get he doesn't. He wants to go find the world. Mm -hmm. I said, and that just becomes exaggerated the course of time. Let, you know, don't worry about that. Be with who you want to be with. Be with that person because, you know, you've got to take care of yourself. The kid's already trying to find his own way in life. And I believe that's true. I knew when I was a kid, when I first could think for myself, it was, how do I get out of here? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a bad home situation. I just, I just was curious about the world. Mm -hmm. And I think the greatest where'd you, where'd gift you can you give a kid is to let the kid feel free you to grow go. Up? I grew up in England. Where? Uh, in London. London. Yeah, mid London. You, you, London. you went away to like a boarding school. Oh no, 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 right? no! I went to local state school. You oh, know, it was your dad? Why, why did I remember that story too? I sort of thought you yeah. went to boarding school too, or maybe and he was out here or something. That. Was he out here for part of that time or something? You no, were back in no. Um, we were. My mother and father split when I was nine, but I grew up with my mother and went to what we called. Um, or well, state school, which you call public school in this country, high, the equivalent of high school and junior high. Uh, we he, actually he moved said. here in 71 with him because we were a close family, even though huh. the parents had split. We still stayed close. Because your um, mother was from England? Yeah. Oh, so you went with her? Yeah, we, we were school. all in England. No, we were all in England. Oh, okay. And in fact, uh, we moved back to America and my father moved back at the same time. So we moved back here when he brought penthouse here. Bob, spin drove me crazy for years. How come? The HIV thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, let's the, talk about it. It drove me nuts. Why? Why? Because it was so wrong. Oh, no, it's so right. It's been ever more proven right. Oh, Bob. No, seriously, where do you think it's wrong? <laughs> I'll let you start. Uh, let, let me put it this way. I'll let you start. Well, I don't want to. Let's, not, let's talk during the break. During the break. Because no. a little bore. Oh, no, bore no, Adam, no, bore no, no, I think no, the whole no, of well, America's going, yo, man, a fight, a fight, fight well, right now. The, tell them what. Tell Studio them One, fight. Set it up, the, bro. That, that Spin ran a series of articles about HIV and the virus and not being associated with the AIDS disease. And me and everyone who treats AIDS now the very foundation of treatment is suppressing and we've actually mapped out the amount of virus produced and the activity disease the cell death that occurs in relation to the amount of virus produced so the whole the entirety of the focus of the disease is suppressing the viral count and that's equated with what if suppressing you're wrong? the disease what if you're wrong what if it's not the virus then all those you're trying to suppress the viral count and it doesn't matter what what if I mean, then all those people that used to die shouldn't have died that's Possibly true for the reverse. Possibly they died because the onus was on the wrong thing. L let me now rebut. Um, mm. Our articles, we did 120, 10 years, literally 10 to the day, uh, 10 years of a column every month, 120 items. In, in the entirety of that 120 article run, we never once had to print a correction. Factually, we, were never, we never printed a wrong fact. People didn't agree with our conclusions of those facts. Uh, secondly, we never said HIV doesn't cause AIDS. What we said was no one has proven conclusively, mm -hmm. and the single scientific paper to this day exists that says this is how HIV causes AIDS. There are papers that say we believe it causes AIDS. They say there's a correlation between AIDS and HIV. But, and the, but you understand that that's science. In science, no, I don't you, in know. science, we know, we know polio virus causes polio. No, in science, you can't prove that a billiard ball connecting with another billiard ball causes the other billiard ball to move across the table. You can't prove that conclusively. Well, you can only make associations nobody di nobody and, dies. and build theories on that. Nobody dies if you can't prove the billiard ball did the other billiard ball. Uh, but but all science is theory. There's no fact in science anywhere. Well, I don't know. Well, we we, we all know the polio virus causes polio. We know how it works. We can we can prove the chain of action, chain of action reaction. Um, Let me ask you a question, yeah. Bob. Where's Cause, Dr Dr I, well, let me just say this. I don't I respect like Drew. Don't get me wrong. No, I do like Drew. I do like <laughs> Drew. Bob, I like it. That's why I can I, have this discussion. I like Drew, and I respect Drew immensely. And Drew is not alone in believing that uh, HIV is, in fact, absolutely the cause of AIDS. I 
believe that it's not been proven it doesn't cause it, but I believe it hasn't been proven it does cause it. And I think that there's a lot of evidence that suggests really chronic self-abusive behavior, whether it's chronic um, sexual activity, mm -hmm. uh, bringing about the introduction of so many different foreign proteins into your own bloodstream that your bloodstream gets overwhelmed, whether it's uh, drug abuse, intravenous or otherwise, that in fact destroys the organ's ability Actually, to defend you. The, the current, the current uh, heroin addicts, they live longer with AIDS. IV heroin addicts do unusually oh, well. Look at Keith Richards, he lives longer. He they just lives longer. They do unusually well. Heroin is good uh, for you. I'm beginning to believe unexplainedly well with the AIDS virus. That's right, fascinating. Right That's actually, yeah. I didn't know That's fascinating. Let, let me just ask you this, Bob. Where's your information coming from? I mean... No, his information is factual. I, no, I, I just mean, I mean, he is not a doctor. He's getting his information from yeah. doctors That's and a great question. What camp is this? It's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, I used to debate this, as you know, Drew, hmm. uh, endlessly. Um, and you could wake me up at three in the morning from a dead sleep and put me on the phone with a scientist and I'd go into automatic debate mode. Um, and I used to always point out, I'm a journalist. I'm not a scientist that under the answers. I'm a journalist. I have the questions. And I, I stick to that, th that line. I have the questions. And until somebody completely and comprehensively answers those questions, I'll keep answering them. Where do I get my information? Ironically, is from the government. It's all, the only place you can get statistics is the NIH. In, in most diseases, as Drew will tell you, there are a number of different sources that research it. With AIDS, uniquely so, all research has to be sanctioned by the NIH. So in effect, they control, they literally control the virus. They, they dole out samples of it. You and I couldn't get it. We could have a laboratory. It could be a recognized laboratory in every other part of the world, but the NIH is not going to give us HIV. We cannot study it in this country. So the NIH literally controls the study of AIDS. It's, it's not true of other, other diseases. Um, so we got all of our information from the government studies. We read them, you know, absolutely scrupulously. And we found that their own statistics and information suggested incongruencies. But and we dealt with, journalistically, those incongruencies. We never said HIV doesn't cause AIDS. We said there's just massive incongruencies, including the fact there are thousands, maybe only five to 10,000 cases of um, AIDS, clear cut, absolutely AIDS with no HIV. These are now called ICL, which is a name I can't pronounce on anywhere in fact <laughs> I can't pronounce it even at home it's a Latin name for me it means basically uh, AIDS uh, same without as AIDS. HIV it, that's what it means it, it's, but do um, you believe there's a conspiracy no no and that's the interesting thing and I, I differ with a lot of the so-called uh, dissidents in this because well, I don't it started with that though oh yes it started as a conspiracy that's what thing. it used to drive me crazy yeah no I don't believe it. I never did yeah. in fact I've argued with the uh, main proponent of this this whole theory Duisburg who's a friend I've argued violently with him publicly and privately I argued with him Duisburg, a radio show Duisburg the <laughs> Jewish private eye <laughs> yes that really Adolf Duisburg really, really no 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 like Peter Duisburg eye. the scientist um, I said it's not a conspiracy theory. What it is is a confluence of events and circumstances. If you go back to when AIDS happened, it was the early 80s, and it only afflicted the gays in the beginning. Now, it may have afflicted some other people, we didn't realize it, but it definitely afflicted the gays. Mm. It was, in fact, known as the gay cancer. Or well, it was called GRIDS, Gay-Related Intestinal Disease Syndrome. Absolutely, yeah. So it was completely thought of as a gay thing. Well, the gays realized that no one much cared about them societally in 1980 and 81. So they said, well, anyway, anybody's going to ever care about us is if we spread a bit of fear that, hey, you're laughing now, guys, but some of these guys are bisexual and they're sleeping with your wives and your girlfriends. So laugh all you want. They're going to give it to you. So naturally, every heterosexual, myself included, just absolutely, I can't use the words crap. I'll use the word crap to ourselves. We often got tests. We're going to die. We're all going to die. Oh, my God, I've had sex more than once. Right. We're going to die. I'm negative now, you know, I'll get mm. tested again next week, I'm sure I'm positive, right? We're all frightened. frightened. So all of a sudden AIDS became in the mainstream and two things happened at once. One, the heterosexuals got scared. Two, homosexual community, which was at the time, the only one that was afflicted was the bathhouse community that mm -hmm. was massively promiscuous. Suddenly, they're not so ostracized. Suddenly they're put into the mainstream. Suddenly we have to care about that world because it could be our world now. So empowering a community that had themselves even admitted they were marginal they now became very empowered societally next thing you know you have AIDS dissidents I mean AIDS uh, activists rather mingling with the heads of the NIH and the, all the all the health agencies right. at cocktail parties talking about well we, we care about you folks well great we we're glad you care about us Pr approve more drugs and they're going uh, let's see the drug industry would like that too we'll approve more drugs 
And then ten years later, you look back and you go, you know, this AZT that's sort of like sucking on the back of a Concorde while it was taking off. That's well, how toxic that was. Well, the, well this was. And the, then it goes the, on. The and speed, on. the speed with which drugs were, drugs were being brought to market. Let me tell you something interesting. Thing. A doctor told me, Doctor Rasnick from uh, Oakland, who's a very, very well-known and well-respected uh, researcher, cancer researcher, now an AIDS researcher. He told me, he explains to me once. He says, what nobody realizes is that the, the activists pushing for early release of drugs eliminated something called phase three mm -hmm. the phase three trial mm -hmm. which costs on average a couple of hundred million dollars to each company drug right? companies love that absolutely but, but the public, now they've eliminated I, let me just explain this because i don't want to sound like a nutcase to your listeners the, the way it was explained to me was now that they've eliminated the most expensive part of yeah, the trial, yeah. they can bring a drug and to time market consuming. for and time 40 percent less than it used to cost them, right. and they're charging you more. All of a sudden, it's massively but, profitable. But wouldn't you, if you were the drug company? It's what. The, it's uh, no, what, I'd like to think I'd have more morality than that. No, oh, it's, it's no what way. it's what they're being asked to do. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you, Adam. Slap me again, please. Wait, what, because I understand. Because I was getting dizzy. Well, well, understand, understand something. <laughs> they're being asked to do this. They're being asked to bring stuff to market yeah. as fast as yeah. possible. All right, Drew, hold on. You, you and Bob got to finish this sparring you match. That commercial. That's this all right. Sparring. I always end up wanting no. to hug Bob after our discussion. And, and I, you. <laughs> easy, easy, you two. I'll turn a hose on you. see, isn't it? 37 hours without coming. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah. The sight yeah. of you and I hugging may, that's may the, break his... That's the hose he's talking about. Right. <laughs> At the end of the night, hey, Bob, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <thank you>. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> all right. Sorry. We'll be back with uh, calls, I promise, after this. <laughs> There. Bob Guccione Jr. is our guest tonight. Bob, uh, still in the bathroom? No, he's... he's oh, he's in the next room. Yeah. Well, let's uh, bring Bob in the uh, studio if he's uh, over there, Ann. He is the uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Gear... Is it editor-in-chief? editor and chief I would assume it's Ann, in chief. but it's in, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know what the, the origins of that term is. Editor-in-chief? Yeah, it's like... It's like uh, what would that be? It's like Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine we're, we're, expedition. We're trying to say where the, the term editor in chief, like in in total, he's like overall. Is yeah, that yeah word? I don't know where it came from. You're yeah. right. Just one of the things we accept. Yes, yeah. I want to accept that editor in chief is somehow like a deity. Well, you know what? What I'll do is I'll make I'll that. make it work. I'll change it to editor and chief because it makes know, more I know sense you do, to but me. Like, how about in residence? No, no, he's right. Editor and chief usually works. <laughs> Thanks, but, Bob. Yeah, now you work. There would have been probably something like editor in residence at one time, and then. Editor. <laughs> I'm an editor insane. Heather. Yes. You're 35. What's up? Yes. Um. Well, I guess there's a someone who's been a friend since '94. I worked with him then. Um, when I left the area, he was going through a separation in his marriage, um, which was difficult for him. Grew up. Tremend tremendously horrible childhood. He did or you did? He did. Uh huh. So you got you got to rescue him. You're gonna make it all good for him. Uh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> so what's he doing now? Why are you even calling about him if that's not the case? Well, because all right, um, he shortly after that he was institutionalized um, for a while. He hold on. He is a guy you worked with seven, eight years ago. Right. All right. And when's the last time you saw him? Uh, four years ago. Okay. So we've maintained a phone friendship. All right. And what is he doing now? Basically. Um, I guess it started, I mean, he recently had a relapse as well. On what? Several months ago. Speed. Um He was, he was um, admitted into the psych ward for a shorter time. Oh, you don't mean a relapse on drugs. You mean a relapse of his condition? Yes. Okay. Of some sort. Is he some part of it. Man anyway. manic depressive or something? Um, they, they've gone through a lot. It, manic depressive seems most, um, they've gone through a lot of diagnoses. At one point it was schizophrenic. All right, all right. So the question is, w what, what is he doing what right now? What is he now? doing now? Um, he sent a wedding, he sent an engagement ring uh -huh. in a card. And he told me that he had it. And he said he had asked me, and I, and I, I don't remember him asking at all. Um, he asked me to to move in with him as support, and I said no. He's across the country. All right. Anyway, he asked you to marry you, and you don't remember it. I, think, I don't think he did. Well, I could he couldn't have you? How would you not remember that? I would remember. <laughs> Absolutely, he clearly did not. You would uh, remember. I, I I got the quality of his being in and out of psychiatric hospitals. I'm not understanding the nature of your relationship with him. You haven't seen him in four years. No. no. You talked to him on the phone. 
yes, quite, yeah. 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 And why, why, why all the concern? Why are you keeping up? Yeah. You know what I mean? The guy's out of bounds. He's out of sync. He, he's in and out. You know what I mean? Why, why do you keep this going with him? Well, see, I have other similar, I mean, not like that, but just because I specifically just as a friend. Well, this is back to you keep fixing him again. You can't let him go. No, no, no. Even... I'm, I can't fix him. I know that. Yeah, but he's, he is but his, he's trying to. His behavior is becoming dangerous. Right. That's what my okay. parent. He just recently, uh, and I told him, you know, no, this is this is coming back. All right. Hey, hey, Heather, let me just jump in for a second. You are the conductor of chaos. <laughs> Do you, do you understand me You're like a lightning rod for chaos? You've kept. Are you a big gal? No. Not not a overweight gal. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah, Drew thought that. No. Uh, <laughs> you, you. Well, no, I thought that somebody no, should what, be socially what, isolated. What you're, what you're doing is is this is a situation that a healthy person would get away from right. and not no. have anything to do with, and you are maintaining it. No, I'm not, I'm not, you, you're massaging it. Uh, yes, I'm not making it your fault, except for you got one crazy person and one sane person. You're having a relationship. It's the same person's fault. The crazy guy will go on for a thousand years. Well, and it's not that you can't maintain a relationship, but don't allow the disease. Don't support the disease. It's the same with addicts. When they're in their disease, that's it. Their behaviors got to stop. Right. And if part of getting it to stop is taking your medication, and following up with your treatment team, you got to do that. Then when you're back, even again, then you can you can establish a relationship. And everyone who's in a relationship right now, take responsibility for it, whether it's a work relationship, a platonic relationship, or a love relationship. Take responsibility for being there. It's interesting. I, I was Good over. Point. I was at Larry King's tonight. Uh, Dharma and uh, Rick. Got back together tonight. You were at Larry King's. It's tonight? a long story, but wait, Jesus, wait, 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 Darva and 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 right. And who Rick. wants wait, to marry? Wait, 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 they got together. Well, they had their was... first meeting. You know, to oh, 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 pull them I, out I, of a back room. They had me there to make sure. No, no. they were they were convinced she was going to storm out. They want somebody to sort of fill, fill and discuss what had just happened. You know, when after she storms out, but. <laughs> But the interesting thing, no, is funny? <laughs> Your career is uh, heading right into the hamper, buddy. Isn't, is, what's interesting is... He's guest hosting Larry King's, and I don't yeah. know, my money's on Drew's. No it's way. Go, Bob. go ahead. And what's interesting, though, is she kept going, you've got to take, I take responsibility for everything. Uh, this was my fault. I, you know, I, I, this was a mistake on my part. I take the responsibility, and I think he should, too. Right. And I thought to myself, well, whoa, whoa, it doesn't work that way. You either take responsibility, and that's that. Right. Or you're telling somebody else to take responsibility. Yeah. It's not, no, you're not deflecting any of it. Right. Well, she's obviously got something up. And he, him, if you take a look at that guy's eyes, yeah, I, no, no, I would head for the hills. No, he just doesn't do well on TV, I think, is the thing. But I don't think he'd, he'd, do, he'd do well anywhere. He's, that guy looks like a axe murder. Yeah, yeah, but that's when he's nervous. When he's this guy wouldn't even do well online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he scares me, that uh, Rick... Uh, yeah. What's his name? Rick Rockwell? Rick yeah, right. Rockwell. Anybody called Rick Rockwell scares me. He's got, he's got a name like he's uh, like one of the Flintstones. You know, <laughs> exactly Rick, right. That's perfect. Rick Rockwell. Exactly. I can just see the episode. Rick Rockwell's coming to town. Woo! Betty loves Rick Rockwell. <laughs> Ronnie! <laughs> well, Ma. Aaron? Hello? You, you're 18. What's up? Yeah, um, and he was 15 I last time we spoke to him. Then what? Oh, yeah. okay, different era. I got a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, lately, the past couple of years, I've been noticing that I might have a fear of intimacy problem. Um, I know I'm only 18, but, you know, uh, I've had a couple serious relationships. And when I, got, when I get to that point where she's ready to uh, have sex, I really... Oh, your fear of having sex? Yeah. That's not necessarily a fear of intimacy. It is for a woman. For a guy, it's fear of sex. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> it ain't intimate for guys. That's it's true. So true. <laughs> That's true. Right. Well, no, I just become really scared to the point where I kind of like back off for a couple you have a, of days. Uh, well, Adam's usually line of questioning Arling, this when this happens is, is there a lot of guilt and shame? Is some religious uh, element here? Super... Actually, I'm really not that religious. Are you, Is your family? Yeah, my mother is. Okay. Well, is, it, is it a fear of performance? I'm sorry? Is it a performance fear? No, actually, I'm not afraid of. I'm not. A, it's not being afraid of whether or not I'm good at it or a fear of STD. It's. I'm just. I just can't get myself to do it. What is the? Is there a fear associated with anything? Like something's going to happen but, to me. But and... listen, if you thought you were going to excel at it, wouldn't you be more apt to do it? Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's what we're saying, and that's what Bob is saying. Yeah, it's always been my thing. I've always thought. 30 years later that I was going to one day yeah. sell it. Let me tell you something. Sex is no different than karaoke. 
when you're young, your first time you hit the stage, your, your knees are shaking, you don't think you're any good. Then later on in life, you get loaded, you wrestle that mic away, and you start belting out. You a, start thinking you're doing you good. You start thinking you're doing good. Yeah, you actually aren't. No, you matter. You're, 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 you're worse than you were the first time. But the point is, is now you're drunk, and you got the confidence of ten men. You wrestle the mic away from the MC. You roll right into uh, Swear to God by a Frankie Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you, you at least feel good. He's worried. He's got I'm to not dive sure, in. I'm not sure we're making Aaron feel any better. <laughs> no, Aaron's got to... We're making ourselves feel better. The first X amount of times you have sex as a man is uncomfortable. You can put that off or you can take care of it in high school. However you choose to address it, you have to address it. You could put it off to your 40. It'll be just as uncomfortable as you were at 15. It's best with a relationship. Just get someone you know and break them in. Yeah. <laughs> Like an old yeah. man. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Bob Guccione Jr. is our guest tonight. He's editor in chief. And happy to be. Of uh, Gear Magazine. I'm a happy editor in chief. Did you uh, start with Spin Magazine? Yes, I did. And that was uh, your first magazine? Yeah. Wow. Sold that for forty-three million bucks. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, how long was it around before you sold it? Uh, Twelve and a half years. Mm. I didn't get all forty-three million. I mean, I don't want anybody believing I'm not right. That's that smart. Not a penny over forty. <laughs> did uh, and then you took that and launched, launched put that gear. into gear. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Why change? Why start something else? Well, it isn't exactly that simple. I mean, I'd been wanting to do something different. I've done spin for twelve and a half years, and I, I call it the really road the road to liquidity. You oh, see? is that what it is? Yes. You got you got to turn your business into, and then turn it over and then every it so and often. When when the market wants to buy, someone wants to buy it, so, sell yeah. it. Yeah, so it's sort of like real estate: get a house, yes. fix it up, live in it, wait till the market gets good, yes. sell it, and then look around for your next bargain, fix that up. Yes. And uh, that's yeah. what's going that's, on. That's I, 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 I would like to think my life was slightly more noble, but it probably isn't. <laughs> has, has, do people offer to buy gear? I have actually had offers already. Oh, yeah. I'm sure of that. Yeah, but but but, but not that I want to do it yet. No. What's it coming in at? Is it is the it, offers is it in the neighborhood of spin or is it no. lower? It's lower no. than spin. No. Well, it, spin was a was a big success by the time I sold it. It was a entrenched magazine. Uh, it had usurped Rolling Stone in the younger end of the mm. market, but. Gears on its way. Gears, gears bigger circulation now than Spin was when I sold him. Oh wow. really? Yeah, gears five hundred fifty thousand circulation. And in, in just in bigger than details ever was. Details mm -hmm. Oh really? Yeah. In, in general publishing, you know, there was all this talk, and and there's always all this talk. It's like when a satellite came out, it was like, well, that's the end of the movie theater. Mm -hmm. No one's going anymore. Right. Yeah. They might as well just uh, turn them into coin up car, you know, laundries <laughs> or something. And and it didn't happen, you know. Right. And, and you know, the Internet and all this other ways of getting information, reading text and getting things for free and in real time and all that, that'll be the end of the publishing industry. It, it's not. Well, interestingly, if you go back even further, go back to the days of the very first magazines and newspapers. We! Along comes, even before we, oh, I see. control yourself, 37 and a half hours and counting. <laughs> 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 And uh, and he's still intact. That's right. Um, but you know the very first days of publishing, long comes radio. Right. Yeah. Decimate it. Well, it didn't. And it should have. Right. Because instead of a newspaper, which you had to wait a day for, radio could tell you immediately. Long comes television. Well, that's got to be the end of all. And, of it, and right? the radio. Of course, it wasn't. Yeah. And then along comes movie. Well, movies with uh, well, came for television, but along comes videos. Now that was it. I remember this is when I was a young adult in the early seventies. Along comes video. That was the end of all media. Well, of course it wasn't. Along comes you know. The proliferation internet. of the internet, cable, you know, massive proliferation of television channels with cable, and so on and so forth, DVDs, yeah, you know what, satellite. it all expands, it expands, it actually feeds each other, mm. right, it's it, like a fertile, a fertile a planet, right, so, you know, they, it all feeds, right. and today, we're, we're doing in our next issue, um, we're doing an interactive magazine, we've, we've joined forces with a company called Digital Convergence, and has a QCAT technology, you know when you go to the supermarket and there's a laser scanner, mm -hmm. you know, so everything you buy is scanned and price appears immediately? Some genius took this technology idea and applied it to a barcode on a magazine, on a printed page, and said, well, if you scan this, you go to the website, because it's a destination. The, the, the barcode is the destination. So you can send it anywhere you want. So this guy puts on ads, so the ads go to their website. So the guy says to me, do you want to be the uh, exclusive men's magazine in the category to carry our technology? I said, sure, but I want to apply it to editorial pages. 
because I want the listeners, or your listeners, my readers, but I want our readers, when they're reading a record review, to listen to the music. Mm -hmm. So we're going to download the music that you're reading the review of. Uh. So the new U2 album, you're reading the review, you scan the, the barcode, you can hear two tracks. Wow. So it's fascinating. And then you can extra extrapolate that. Come September, we'll take you to the Milan fashion shows. You'll be able to scan a barcode in the magazine and see the Milan fashion shows. You'll be able to see movie trailers before the movies come out. Wow. I mean, it, it just, it's this technology. It's fantastic. So we've made the magazine interactive. Uh. And so... in. In an appointment I had earlier today with advertisers, I said, you have to understand, I'm not intimidated by the internet, I'm marrying it. Right. You know, we're just put, bringing it together. Print isn't going to go away. Good print isn't going to go away. Bad print, mediocre print, indistinguishable print, of course it'll go away. It's Darwinian. Yeah. And, 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 and b by the way, you know, you, you can't, uh, you can't, at least at, at this point, when you're, uh, you know, taxing on a jet plane, right. be on the internet or watching cable television. But I, I do agree with you, and that's an interesting thing, which is it, these businesses, the satellite and the printing and industry or the publishing industry, movies, DVDs, they haven't canceled each other out. They've created a greater thirst for overall Absolutely. knowledge and entertainment, sure. which is... Uh, and then everyone's a winner, except for me. I've become less interested. <laughs> I, I don't think I you, you just haven't become more. That's all. Oh, is that what it is, yeah. Sarah? Yeah. <clears throat> You're 17. What's up? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm going crazy, and I keep on getting suicidal thoughts, but I don't want to kill myself. But all I right. just don't know what to do because I'm so tired of living with at, at my home life and and uh, like. Okay, hold on, Sarah. Turn, turn your radio. I'm going to kill myself if you don't turn that radio down. All right, she uh, did that. She it says up on the screen, she's 17, she's run away. She hates her mother. She has nightmares. Sarah? Yeah? Has your mom been abusing you or hitting you, that kind of thing? Yeah, she gets up and tries to attack me a lot. And Cause, cause that's kids, kids that run away from home, it's when they're, they're, they, run, they run away and stay away when they've been abused. That's it. Where are you calling from? Seal Beach. Oh, I see. Well, have you ever been in a psychiatric hospital? No, I hospital? mean, where? Um, I've... Are you at home? Yeah. Yeah, I just came back like a week ago. From a psychiatric hospital? Uh, no, I've only been in a place once. Don't you think it's important to get that properly taken care of with well, the depression the way it is now? I, I want to get help, but I went to the clinic and they didn't even really talk to me. They just gave me a bunch of pills. Well, I suggest you... I just feel drugged up all the time. I suggest you talk to the people that were dealing with your depression because the 10, 20% of people with depression die. It's a very serious condition. If you're having suicidal thoughts, that's how serious the situation yeah, is now for uh, you. I've had them, like, my whole life. I understand, I, but I don't. they're kicking up right now, and that's the time that you should be supervised to make sure but, that nothing happens to you. Let's, let's, let's listen to the problem. She was saying that she goes there and she feels like just give her pills. I mean, that would add to depression. I mean, it, where, where do you send somebody who uh, can get to maybe good conversation? Well, the problem is when people are in a biological state where they start thinking suicidally the important thing is to be in a structured environment where they can't because they will yeah, it's them. the thing I, I just I can't find stability anywhere and I don't I just don't know what to do like I'm not really motivated to get a job well, yeah. do, you, do you have listen your mom is a bust I'm guessing your dad's not around no. do you ha and what about your friends uh, I only have one what's going on in the background the there, radio Sarah? Uh, it's the radio hey Sarah yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to come down on you because of the whole suicide thing and stuff, but I, I'm serious. I will kill myself if you don't turn the goddamn radio down. I, I just did. <laughs> okay, so is your mom an alcoholic? Is she into drugs? Uh, she drinks. And is that when she's rageful, when she's drinking? Um, just, I don't know. Mainly she just tells me how I ruined her life. And mm. Hey, my you know, mother used to tell me that. Yeah, and how, like, uh, my dad and me ruined her life and... All right. My mother didn't mean it. I think that's the lesson. I've just been I've been leaving home since thirteen and just been traveling the country, hitchhiking mm -hmm. everywhere. So I, you don't you don't have do you have what uh, you would call a best friend? Uh, I have a friend that I have phone conversations with, but I feel like a burden to him all the time. Well, but I, I'm sure you're not. He's your friend. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you trust him? Is he yeah. in town? Yeah, I, I trust him. He lives really close. Could you call him? Well, I'm not suicidal at the moment, but it's just like when I sleep, I feel like somebody's grabbing my leg through my blanket or something, like 
I could feel weight, and I'll turn around, and I start thinking I'm going crazy or something. But you're not hey, can you put a lock on your door? <laughs> what? Why don't you put a lock on your bedroom door? <laughs> What's so bizarre about that? Uh, lock it before you go to bed at so, night. So you feel more secure. Yeah, you won't have to worry about your mom pouncing on you. And... Uh, I just want a stable environment. Yeah, I, I understand that, but see, Sarah, uh, let, me, let me just tell you something. You may not find that with your mom right. in the situation that you're currently in, okay? <laughs> what you need to do is get through this environment so you can get into a new environment. And structure it as best you can. Hey, are you, you going to college? Uh, no, I have, I'm still trying to finish the ninth grade. I went back to school. All right. Ninth, oh, because you ran away for a while, yeah. Hey, listen, Sarah, uh, forget about the education for now. Here's, here, let, me, let me explain your priorities in life. A, barrel bolt lock on your door so that when you go to bed at night, you don't have to think about who's stepping through it, okay? Mm. B is getting a GED, getting a job. Do you understand? Yeah. And then getting independent, get a roommate, get a buddy, get a friend, and get out on your own. Also, you got to do the counseling for, for you right now. Talk to these people. For right now, you have to promise that you're not going to hurt yourself. You got to promise us that. You got to call your friend, keep people around you, and if you really feel like you can't contain the impulses, you're going to hurt yourself. You, you've got to get. You've got to get back to the hospital. All right, and and listen, everybody. I I'm, I feel bad that your homes are a mess and your parents are wrecks, and I, we hear it night after night after night. And there's at a certain point, you have to say. I'm writing off mom, I'm writing off dad, I'm 17, I'm 18, I'm an adult, I'm going to get a job, and I'm going to get out there and make for myself. And it's sad, and it's too bad you don't have that support. There's no, there's no alternative. Get another, get a friend, get someone who may be in the same situation who wants to get out of the house, get a one-bedroom apartment. I, that's what I did. Just got a couple of buddies, moved out. You, you get a one bedroom, you get three futons, and everyone pays 140 bucks a month, and you get yeah. some minimum wage wage piece of ass job, but you're out. Right. You know, life is a gift. And it's a gift given once, not twice. So right. if you have, you have, you're lucky enough to have your health, and you're alive. No, there's no perfect world. None of us have it perfect. None of us have it blemish free. Just cherish the gift of life. Nobody can to preserve it and extend it, and get. As, as Adam says, get out of the bad situation, get into any other situation, and just believe that tomorrow can be a better day. Because one day there won't be a tomorrow for all of us. And until that day, keep trying to make it a better tomorrow. And, and it's not as tall an order as you think. I mean, uh, literally, I just lived in a one bedroom with three guys. The rent was four fifty at the time, and everyone paid one hundred and sixty-five yeah, yeah, bucks. And you were suppressed then, though, huh? Oh, I wanted to kill myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I had no alternative. And we just made it work. I didn't have car insurance. I didn't have dental. I didn't have medical. I had a job where I got seven bucks an hour and dug ditches, and we all just lived together. That was it. I mean, what What's the alternative? You were happier then. I was. Yeah, I was. I don't, we were all happy. I don't kids. know why. It's so funny. We look back on those days and go, well, you know, that was simple. Katie? Hello? You're 19. What's up? Hi. How are you? Good. Um, I had a question, and you might be able to answer it, but I think Dr. Drew might have, I don't know. Like, All right, go ahead. Knowledge. Um, when I smoke pot, I use a vaporizer or heat gun. A, a what? A, a heat vaporizer. gun. What's a heat gun? I... A gun. Turn, turn your radio off, please. Turn your radio off. Jeez. Sarah, get people to turn their radios off. Sarah. I, it wasn't my radio. It was my TV. Show. All right, the TV. I didn't turn off the radio, but it's. Yeah. All right. Hey, listen, Stoner. Do we have to spend twenty minutes getting to the question? What's no, a heat gun? I, what is a heat gun? The heat gun is a. It's a Makita heat gun. No, oh, yeah, it's for stripping paint. I have one. <laughs> you use it to light your pot? No, I don't no, smoke I weed off don't. it. I burn no. lead-based paint and get a high off of that. Okay. Yeah, I do what okay, it's used for. Like that's natural. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, how do you? It's hot air and it doesn't combust the pot, and therefore you just get vapors. Doesn't what the pot? Combust it. it I... The pot is still green afterwards. Oh, I, I, like... Is this sort of like the Martha Stewart of pot? <laughs> are we? Yeah. Are we getting it? <laughs> right. She made a, a lovely pot arrangement last, last Christmas. <laughs> hey, Katie. 
I, I don't understand how that works. I mean, first off, that heat gun will combust something if you hold it close enough for long enough. You have it on like a really low setting, just a little bit past one. And it doesn't. Well, well, then it's smoldering. Then it's not. It may not be flaming, there's but it's no. No, there's. You don't think that there's any smoke. No, no. Listen, listen. This, this is, is not, like this is not a major problem, right? <laughs> no, but I'm interested from a scientific standpoint here. Oh, now he's interested. It's oh, yeah, he is part and he's interested. Well, what I mean is, is it's like me saying I'm going to smoke a cigarette without lighting it. Right. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to hold it over the stove and heat it up, but not to the point where it catches on fire, just to the point where it heats up enough so that the tobacco vapor is released, and it doesn't make sense. Okay. So... They do sell, like in magazines for herbal smoking or whatever that they say vaporizer does that concept make do you guys are you familiar with that concept at all well vapor is water okay that's what a vapor is it's a colloid uh-huh so if it's you not heat gun with the wa with the bubbler with the well, where's water. the water Where's the water? Pipe. All right, so water it, it, it never gets to the smoke stage you you suck up the pot vapor okay all right, I, I'll, I'll buy it. I mean, do you, do you get high? Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think I think she's giving us some evidence. Yes, and does this works? Does does, does the asked, does the weed I go? Guess. Hold on, does the weed go further that way? Yeah, it does a lot further. Are you saying it doesn't smoke? I've smoked yeah. pot Wait, this, the, for a very long time. Right, I, I lovely. Pot, it wouldn't get me down <laughs> for very long. Yeah. And if I take a vape hit, I can get stoned for like an hour. And it's. It's, uh, it's not no smoke no produced. Smoke. Do you realize that all across America well, people are taking notes right now? Very white, it looks like smoke that you blow out, but this that's smoke. I can't show you the process. That's smoke, it though. Doesn't... It's smoke. Wait, what are we? What are we doing? I don't know. What, do, don't know. what, what does our life come to? I don't know what this is chick is. This chick is, this, this chick is burned out on I'm pot, sort of and she's with her. but she and she she smolders weed and inhales the smoke, blows out the smoke, and then says, "Well, it's not really smoke." Yes. What do you exhale? What comes out of your mouth? I like it. I. Okay. You can't call it smoke. It doesn't taste like smoke. It doesn't I, I know, but you're blowing smoke out of your mouth. You wouldn't blow vapor you don't back blow, out of your mouth. Vapor gets, re, it gets absorbed. Right. Really, so. Okay. All right, Katie. Hey, Katie. Yeah. You need to do your pot smoking. You need to do your pot smoking. That's my question. All right. Go, go, son. The reason son. that I did that was because I was told that it didn't combust, and therefore if pot releases a toxic chemical, it's when it combusts. Is no, that no. That is not true at all. Listen, you, you're... Uh, your your brain is like roadkill, baby. You got to slow down. Do you hear me? You don't hear I'm yourself. Cool, and I'm doing very. I'm Katie, doing listen. Katie. I, I don't care if you work for NASA. You're practically a retard. <laughs> I've been talking to you for 20 minutes. Now listen. You don't think it affects you, but it does. We got three guys here who aren't stoned, unfortunately, who <laughs> hear just how baked you are. Yeah, I'm afraid he's right. Yeah. And okay. you got to start backing off on this. I don't care yeah. if you smoke it, vaporize it, or put it up your rectum. It's you got to start backing off. If you're getting high, it's affecting you, and you got to slow down with this. Can you do that, Katie? Sure. Here's the All problem. Right. Here's Thank the problem. You. And, and it's talking about suicide. And the first, is, marijuana withdrawal is a very strange thing. People get suicidal without getting depressed significantly. They have these very intense suicidal thoughts, and they often kill themselves. Really? Yeah, it's very strange. It's just the biology of so what... So without depression? Well, it's it, they, they don't identify as depression. The, the, the patients of mine that get this will say, you know, funny thing today, I was, I was going to kill myself. Like, like matter of fact, like, yeah, I had a plan. I was going to go kill myself. Well, very flat, but, but not like I'm sad. I don't, I don't have the energy. It's just, yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd do what it. What is the dangerous There's, age for suicide? Is that like a period in life when it's really the most I'm likely? Certainly is. Definitely it's say insane. like yeah. like 14 to yeah. 17 or eight, 14 to 19 or something like that. There's a pretty steady, steady rate yeah, after that. Cece? Hello? You're 20? Yeah. What's up? What are you guys doing? We're <laughs> arguing with stoners. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Taking back. All right, what do you want? Drinking a bud? Smoking I've one. I've you, yeah. What's up? What's up? It's really, it's, it's, it's an ether night here on Loveline. Everyone's had a Quaalude and a fifth of scotch, and they're all mellowed out. Except what? us, we're drinking like water. Well, yeah. yeah, what is your on question? On Grammy night. What's Rock and roll is dead. My problem is, um, I had this boyfriend a while back who raped me, 
and it was anal rape, so it was like even worse than just rape, you know. It was this was a boyfriend. Yeah. And he just one night had his way with you. You said no. He kept going. Yeah. And had you been having anal sex with him before? Um, we tried it. I said no. I didn't like it. And so he just went for it this time. And then after that, he he had told me that any chick that goes out and you know flaunts her stuff and flaunts her stuff and and got the guy deserves to get raped because that's what she's asking for. In the well, he's all, all class. Well, this guy makes some sick points. Him up. Yeah. All right. So yeah, he what, is. Did, sick. All right. Did you he's call? Did you call the cops? No. Why yeah. not? Because I was totally naked and. and I went and I grabbed the phone and I ran into the kitchen, you know. It's not too late to call him now. No. I don't think there is. You, they can't do much about it after a certain period of time, but they can still make the report. I think it's I think it's three years for rape, but uh, it's a five for anal. I think they, they, they <laughs> call it another two years. It, yeah. yeah, makes yeah. sense. I would, I would do it, and I'll tell you why. Because, number one, you're never going to feel resolved about this. You're never going to feel good about yourself if you don't. Um, and number two, the very least, you're going to scare the wits out of this guy. He's never going to do it to anybody else. And if, in fact, the police do follow it and they find that he's got a pattern of doing this, then you get a bad guy off the streets. Yes, and, and to, to uh, continue Bob's point, if you uh, do do it, if you do get this on the skit, listen, it's important to get everything on everyone's record yeah. because yeah. the next time he gets popped, they'll look back at this episode yeah. and they'll have that much more yeah. ammunition in court. Yeah. All right. It's and still like an embarrassing. Yes, it is. It is embarrassing. Thing. But yeah, but you know what? You know, you know what? He, he what he did is wrong. Yeah. And, right, but and you need to break this cycle of being a victim. Yeah. And the only way you're going to do that is by stepping up and asserting something you deserve to assert, which is your rights as a human being, and not have to tolerate this. All right. Yeah. All right. T season, think about it. Think about what we say, because we say this uh, meaning we we we're thoughtful and we we mean well for you. All right. Well, you and I are thoughtful, Bob. Let's be serious. Yeah, I, 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 was, I, was, counting, I was counting Adam in. I, 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 I like Adam. I haven't masturbated in 39 hours. I'm going, <laughs> going out of my mind. Going insane. I actually want to just like be here when he does it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I feel like history. He's yeah. always ready to hose us down with it. It'll, it'll be the shot heard around the world. <laughs> You and I'd like the rubber sheets now, please. You should hear what is a tantamount to a sonic boom about <laughs> noon uh, tomorrow. Is that the uh, space shuttle landing, or is yeah, that Adam? That it could it could be the one, and you'll feel a very strong like a backdraft, like a after the atomic <laughs> bomb. If you're, you know, yeah, you'll feel your you you'll be sucked backwards into my vortex, which is a code for anus. All right. I do not. I, I really be, I do not want to be sucked into your vortex. I I think I think it's gonna. I'm gonna go so hard that I'm gonna create a vacuum in my anus that it will actually <laughs> suck my pants up my ass as the semen leaves my penis. Is that possible, Drew? If I have a I powerful have orgasm, of course it is. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm a man of science. Bob Guccione Jr. is here. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Yep. There we go. It is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Phone number one eight hundred. Don't you drums? Hmm. That's me. I'm on bass. Bob Guccione on bass. I'm on lead air guitar. Phone number one eight hundred LVE one nine one. All right, I'll tell you what we we should do, guys. Let's what? get some of these calls. Let's like get through some calls. Let's go. Go. Having trouble tonight. I don't know what it is. Everyone's got their radio up. Everyone's uh, on a quaalude. Is that my mom on line three? Mm. Mike. Yeah. No, that Mike's not my mom. You're twenty. I was mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you yeah. got lots of pain during ejaculation. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You, you got to kill yourself. You what? <laughs> That's not I advice, by the way. That was just a sort of rhetorical statement. It, it started about two years ago. Oh, and by the way, hi, Drew. Am I? Uh, uh, just uh, started about two years ago. And I find that if I eat uh, any large amounts of sugar or you know ice cream, anything, I have sex with my wife, and when I try to ejaculate, I get like cramps at the base of my uh, penis, and it's really hard to ejaculate, and it hurts. When you eat ice cream. Uh, any sugar. I, if I drink too much pop or eat too much candy or anything, I find that if I get too much sugar in my system, I don't uh, know. No, I, we don't. We don't buy it. And not that you're lying, but sugar really doesn't do anything. Everyone talks about having a sugar high and being hyperactive and sugar rush and can't concentrate and everything. It's really nonsense. There, there's a there's a famous um, paper called the case of the superstitious pigeon, and what they did was they the Skinner sent down food to the pigeon uh, and the pigeon started learning that if it started doing behaviors it would get the food and then it started sending the food randomly 
and the pigeons developed elaborate rituals to try to get the food to come down, yet it was just being dropped by a machine randomly. And what humans do is they try to make sense of things they don't understand and try to associate it with things that have no real association. It's fascinating. Well, just, yeah. well, that. That. What's that? What do you think this could be then? I think it needs to be evaluated. I think I, it could be a, a hundred different things. I think epididymitis. Could be could be epididymitis, prostatitis, those things are the more common causes of that kind of thing. It could be nothing. Some people just get post ejaculatory pain. Now, should you go to an MD or a pastry chef? Go to <laughs> <laughs> Why am I laughing? Go to, the, go to a urologist. This man has okay, pain right? in his penis, and I'm laughing. I feel terrible. Yeah. I, don't uh, have, I don't have pain in my penis. I'm one of the lucky ones. I know. And I like ice cream. Uh, listen, I, I, uh, I have uh, not yet to have pain in my penis, and I, 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 I count my penis my stars. is good to me. Well, you're looking forward to pain in your penis, right? It's not... I reward my penis with ice cream. Do you? Yeah. Because it's right. good to me. It's been good. <laughs> My a lollipop at the dentist. Destiny? Destiny, 15. What's up? Nothing. Um, I'm just kind of curious. My cousin and I, well, we, we have this girl next door. She's 15. She's moved in. My cousin lives with me. And we notice, like, really odd behaviors. Like, she's 15. She comes over to play with my little five-year-old sister. She likes to play Barbies. Niche. And, like, she's, we went in her room, and she's got, like, a big dollhouse and, like, a bunch of... She's how she's how old? Fifteen. All right, all right. So who cares? Well, she may. I mean, how's how's her family? Her family's really strange. Her little brother comes into our house and like hides, and we'll find him just staring at us. Yeesh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you live with the Jacksons? Yeah. The, 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 the Adams family. God knows what's going on over there. But uh, do you feel that they're, they're either one of these kids pose a threat to you? No, they're just really weird. Like, and the daughter's like really controlling. The daughter. Like around her parents, she'll be like, she'll be a total brat. But when she comes over to my house in front of my parents, she acts like a little angel. All right, hey, you listening to Destiny? She sounds like she's about eleven or so. Yeah, there's a little bit of that here. Destiny, your love line caller is fifteen. You're supposed to be having uh, affairs with forty year old men and chain smoking. Yeah, do you have any it. of those? <laughs> What's up with your life? Nothing. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, you got a whole rear window thing going on with your fifteen year old neighbor. You gotta you, listen. You don't like this girl. Stay she away. gives you the creeps. Don't hang out with her. Yeah, right. All right? Focus right. on your boyfriend and your school and cheerleading practice and, and, and all and that I agree. stuff. There's something going on over there, but it, it, who knows what? Who knows? I but, mean, there's let, so many different reasons for that. Listen, kind of everybody. I, I don't want to sound like a, an ugly American, but if there's somebody who, who you know makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up, just go to the other side. Walk on the other side of the street. Just right. stay out of there. I, I really believe, think about it for a second, 90% of all trouble in life could be avoided by just walking on the other side of the street. You got some neighbor that creeps you out a little bit? You do what I do. You pull up the driveway, you see he's standing out front, you back out again and pretend like you forgot something. You know what I mean? <laughs> You just keep it. I've stood in my garage until, like, my neighbor went back in the house and then walked out. Just You just avoid them. Avoid them like the plague. You'll never get to that point where you guys are sitting around drunk and he's hitting, he's prodding you with something. You, you'll never yeah. get to that next yeah. level. Yeah. That's the point. It's like, girls, you know how you treated me in high school when you didn't want me to even ask you on the date? That's how you have to do it. Right? Yep. I mean, Drew, you know women can do that. Oh, yes. They can nip you even before you ask. They can nip you before you meet them. Right. I've had that. Yeah. yeah. Michelle? Hi, Adam. Hi, hi, Drew. How are you? You're 24. Say hi to uh, Bob Guccione hi, Jr. Bob. Too. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. I've been trying to reach you guys for a long time, but finally got through tonight. Can't believe it. <laughs> it's like a miracle. Well, good. Let's not squander it. Okay. Um, I've got a lot of problems. I'm on medication, um, a couple different kinds, and I'm very obsessive. I have OCD, and um, I live in like government-supported housing. Um, because you're disabled by the OCD. Right. And what manifestations did you have of that? Um, acting out behavior. Like what? Um, harassing guys, stalking guys, um, professors in college. I can't just like. Most dates with guys, but also with shopping. I'm I'm declaring bankruptcy because I can't pay my bills. And um, be so careful about declaring bankruptcy. That's, that's a well, I have a lawyer. It's all thing. it's already being set up and everything. It's all try not to do that. Where's, it, where's your? Have to, I have no other choice. What about your family? Where they've been in all this? My father, I hate him. I wish he was dead. Um, he's horrible, mentally, emotionally abusive. Uh huh. What, um, why? What's what does he do? Uh. Well, I would have gone to college, NYU, if I had 
that he had paid for it. He's very wealthy, and he's denied me money his, his, my whole life because he, he thinks my mother and I are, like, the same person because he, uh, they got divorced when I was six, and then um, he just he got remarried to a much younger woman, and we never got along, right? And he just treated me very badly, like I was an outcast, and now it's his whole family disowned me, and he doesn't even talk to me. We, we, All right, so this is, this is not just OCD. OCD is one feature of a more complex problem. Right. Have you ever been given a diagnosis of a personality? What is OCD? I've been diagnosed with compulsive disorder. Border, borderline. Are you borderline personality? I've been diagnosed borderline manic depressive. So, so you're borderline. So, so you know what that means, right? Right. I do okay. know what that So this is about borderline personality, Michelle. I've been in, day pro in a day program for two years, and um, nothing seems to help. Like right now, I'm like obsessed with celebrities. Like I've like <laughs> like for example, like with your with um the magazine gear, you know, like I. I went looking for it to find the article with Craig Kilborn because I like love Craig Kilborn. I think he's like God, <laughs> and I like obsess so much about guys, and I have never had a relationship with a guy. That's so OCD like, and low self-esteem. I'm not. You got to find a bigger celebrity than Kilborn. <laughs> no, I really want to. No, no, Craig's cool. Oh, yeah, I like Craig's cool. Craig's my friend. He's a nice guy, but come on, let's step it up. No, Adam, I'm like same thing with you. Like, oh I, yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like. I'm obsessed with. Love. I want to be famous. I, 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 I can sing and I can act. I took classes, but yeah. I, I want to be famous. I'm like. All right, mm -hmm. listen, listen. Are you taking your medication? Yeah. Okay, and uh, do you th you think that's good, or you think you may need a little more? No, I'm I've been increasing. I'm taking Seroquel now. All right. I've gotten up. I don't know, Drew, if you know about if like if you think it will help me, but Seroquel's fine. What else? <laughs> I'm taking Prozac, which is the only thing that's ever helped with my OCD with my um. Fine. You do hair pulling and all kind of stuff. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Go ahead. Shopping. Seroquel, Prozac. Um, Clonopin. Clonopin. Okay. All. all right. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Let me uh, make this assessment. Unfortunately, you sound like there's a, a high IQ mind trapped inside all of that chaos in your skull. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, I did really well in school. I'm real, I am smart. Right. And and so it's a shame for you to wa waste your life uh, being uh, under the thumb of these, these afflictions. Yeah. So stay with your medication, stay with your treatment, stay with your doctors. And just stay with it. Stay with the therapy, and it's going to be a job for it's you. It's not helping, though. I've been doing it for such a long time. It's not Yeah, first off, way. God knows what kind of shape you'd be in. You'd probably in, be in uh, Kilborn's backyard right now if you weren't <laughs> on this medication. <laughs> she named you right off the... And then, and then over to my house. <laughs> yeah, but that'd be bad for her, not Adam. I write him letters, <laughs> I write letters, and, like, I'm really up to All right, all right. But listen, hey, Michelle? Yeah? I, I'm gonna, uh, here's what I want to say. And we, I've talked about this before. I've been high on mushrooms a few times. Mm -hmm. I've had thoughts about doing things like, you know, the dog turned into a butterfly or something. <laughs> yeah. But I knew I was high on mushrooms, so I didn't act on it. Like, I knew the dog was really a dog. I've never been high before. I never, never ever did I know, but here's my anything. point. You okay. understand you have a condition. Right, you right. Under I don't want to have it. I, I, don't I know you don't want to have it, but when you sit down to write K Craig Kilborn a letter, why don't you stop? Why don't you go, that's my condition propelling me? Compelling me to do it. So you I know what I'm saying? He'll actually respond. I want to believe that he's going to. He ain't respond. doing it. Why? Because he's an a-hole. <laughs> Is he really? I don't care what Cuccioni says. No, no he's, he's not an a-hole. He's, he's busy. He's busy. He's busy. Yeah, he gets a lot of letters like that. Yeah, well, he never sees all those letters. He. That's oh. right. He won't even see him. Adam's point is right. You know it's obsessive. Why do it? Yeah. Because I feel you, so desperate. I feel so lonely. Why? 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 No stop stop no yourself. Yeah, yeah, but why? I don't know. I have, I have, I have a horrible life. I mean, but, but you did. Wait, you don't have such a horrible life. I bet you don't have I such do. a horrible life. I do. I'm too smart for my own good. I, I'm, well, first of all, you said something very interesting. You're very smart. That's great. Most people aren't very smart. Yeah, but I'm very smart, but I'm, I'm upset. I'm like lonely and depressed. All, all of right. Me. But you've said you need friends, and that is the case. Yes. And you notice that you don't have friends. That's why you feel lonely and depressed. So why don't you work on solving that one? Oh, everybody. I'm telling you the most underrated thing in life is a good group of friends. Oh, yeah. These yeah. people can literally save your life. These people can put a roof oh, over your head in mm -hmm. times of need. These people can get you jobs. These people can get you laid. Mm -hmm. I, people who go through life without a good set of friends, I, I, I'd rather go through life without my legs. I really would. I, I don't understand why they would do this. Everyone, you should all have the best good thing about friends. The best thing about friends is they teach you not alone. Right. They, they support the fact you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time, I mean, we, look, we're, we're all of us adults. The three of us sitting in this room. No, we this room. Just look, look at me when you're talking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, again, I'm being kind. Well, I, I'm a guest. Check <laughs> off count 40 hours now. <laughs> 40 <laughs> hours. You God, even, even I'm beginning to notice how long it's been since I did it. Um, but, you know, we, we still get depressed, right? The three of us. Oh, yeah. we get, sure. I, get, I have my sad days. I have my bum out days. 
but you kind of got to live with it. Somebody very wise, Jonathan Miller, the playwright, once said, depression is like bad weather. You have to sort of let it pass. You have to stand under an awning and wait for it to pass. There's not much you can do about it. Now, I understand, and I'm not being flippant here, that there are people who are very clinical and, and chemically, uh, they well, to chemical mm. pr uh, proportions, and of course, it's beyond uh, waiting for the rain to pass. But I do think, with the case of this young lady, that... Uh, She's got a lot to be thankful for. I hear it in her voice. She's got some breeding. She's uh, probably got a roof over her head. She's smart. She's 24. I got to tell you, there's a point in your life when you're going to have to say, you know what? My dad didn't give me money for college. Uh, next. Well, it's interesting. Right? Right? I mean, wh whether she could. And we're not around. talking about a cause of a rape campaign. But, but, but is, she's, she sees her intelligence as a liability because her thing is, I'm so intelligent, I'm so talented, and yet. Very intelligent. And, 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 yet and yet, I'm living in government housing and I'm too impaired psychiatrically to get a job. Therefore, I'm really screwed. All right. well, what turning it around and saying, hey, maybe maybe I could put Listen, one foot in front of the other. We we got to take a break. Yeah. Everybody, uh, it's, it is up to you to get your ass together. And for some people, it's easy. And for some of you who've called this show tonight, it's hard. But either way, you're doing it. I don't care if you have to hike a block or hike 10 miles. You've got to hike. It's true. We'll be back. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew over there. Bob Guccione Jr. is our guest tonight, editor-in-chief of Gear Magazine. And uh, You know, Craig Kilborn is going to guest yeah. edit the magazine. Wow. Oh, is he? Yeah. How well, interesting. I was, September. I, I was busting I guess his balls just, a little, but I, I like Kilborn. Just, no, he's a good guy. Oh, yes. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very excited he's going to do it. Um... But I think you blew your chance for the big cover story on that issue. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say anything, I but, uh, you know, these people have uh, monitors. You know. I, I may have. I may have. But he, he knows uh, but there's always I like him. There's always another issue. And I've done his show uh, quite a few times and uh, always have a good time. Tiffany? Tiffany? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. What's up? Oh, uh, my question is that um, I've been with my boyfriend for about five years now. And in the beginning, the making love was very, very often. Now it's about every maybe twice a month. How long have you been with him? Five years. Five years? Since you were 14? How old is he? He's 28 now. Yeah, just for comedy. Wow, he's 28. So he was 22 when you were 14? Uh, you can say that. <laughs> well, he was, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing the math, but yeah. Yeah, well, it's not, it ain't hard to do. Uh, he is a fundamentally flawed. Wait a minute, I'm still he was 24, math. 23, 23 when he was uh, 23 when you were 14. And a 23-year-old with a 14-year-old. Think about that. That, yeah. that doesn't bother you, Tiffany, now? No. I mean, because I'm in love. And Wait a minute. I, I forget. Uh, that is an unacceptable statement on this show, I'm sorry to say. It's pathetic, but it's true. That you he is a 23-year-old. You think about that. Who was dating with, and God knows, probably sleeping with a fourteen-year-old? No, he wasn't sleeping with a fourteen-year-old. You said you had sex a lot in the beginning. I didn't have sex with him until I was sixteen. Okay, so you I've been with him five years now. You were together for a couple of years before he had sex. Yes. All right, so he was <laughs> even more flawed. Yeah, so he's twenty-five, book. sleeping with a sixteen-year-old. You think about that. You're eighteen now. Would you be with a sixteen-year-old? No, I'm nineteen now. All right, you're nineteen. Would you be with a sixteen-year-old? Think about the 25-year-old that would be with a 16-year-old. And part of the reason he may not be attracted anymore is you're not a young teenager anymore. Is it him that's doing this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you asked him why? Yeah, he says because he's working. All right. Well, at least he's got a gig. And are you guys living together? We used to. Do you have any children? One. Uh, you have a children? You have a child between mm. you two? A year and a half. The people of marriage is a commitment in this country now, so they don't bother with marriage. All right. And where do you think this relationship is heading? Do you want to get married? Yeah. You do. And does he want to get married? Yes. Why aren't you married then? Uh, it just then came up. Okay. I have a lot of, you know, I have a lot of goals before I want to get married. And All right. What are those goals? I'm very curious. Well, I want to finish. I want to go back to college, actually. Okay, are you pursuing that now? When the money comes along, I will. Okay. Hey, Tiffany. Yes. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to screw with your goals. Here's all I'm saying. I would like your goal to be a not have any more kids. Oh, I'm not. Don't worry about that. Okay. B. Take care of the one that you currently have. 
I do very well. Do you know the child's name? Her name is Kaylin. All right. Lucky guess. And <laughs> B and C, it create a stable environment for the child by working things out with this guy, possibly marrying him. Although I don't trust this guy as this far as guy, I can kick this him. This guy likes young teenagers, Adam. Yes. Okay. That's where he, why he's not yeah. having sex anymore. Tiffany, I, I, this guy is really fundamentally flawed, and I, I really think you should reconsider your relationship with him. Okay. Okay, baby. Listen, Tiffany. Glad we could help. I, I'm really, I do worry about this guy, and I worry about you and your child. I mean, but he's a great father. He's a great supporter. Okay, well then talk to him. The then, then say to him, hey, listen, we're not being intimate that often anymore. What What's up? Let's talk about it. Let's work it out. Can you do that? Yeah, and I've said that, and I've said, you know, I don't want to go, and I don't want to cheat on you. Uh, and, Tiffany, hey, hey, Tiffany. Don't say it that way. Yeah, Tiffany, when you're hostile with a guy, the, the penis doesn't get hard. When you're angry, it doesn't work. Just just tell him you'd like to be more intimate with him and yeah. see what he says, all right? But the anger and the hostility, he ain't going to work. It won't function. That's, right. That's just the way men are. Right. That's right. That's the way bet, women are, I too. he tells her, listen, put on this uh, checkered skirt and this yes. white blouse. And uh, can we put those fake braces on your teeth? Yes. It really, uh, really gives me an erection. Oh, <laughs> people... It, please, it, it, she's fourteen. The guy's twenty-three. I mean, come on, what a what a piece of work. I'm with you on this, Drew. Yeah, I'm with. I'm with you. I think it's, Tiffany just filed this under. He should have known better. Tiffany's a million miles away from it, and it, the, I, the, you, you guys want to know what's going on with this country? Tiffany's mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. The, she is God, Mother Teresa, and the President and the Surgeon General to this one and a half year old. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's the universe. To us, it's the world's most screwed up 19-year-old. Yeah. To this one and a half-year-old, it is everything. It is the universe. Right. And yeah. n think about think about what it's like having Tiffany as your universe. <laughs> that that's going to create some problems. Jim. Ah uh, yeah. You're yeah. 36. What's yeah. up? Uh, Adam, uh, you are great, and uh, I actually have a question for Dr. Drew. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, so you, even though Adam's great. Uh, yeah, he cracks my ass, man. All right, Jim. What's up? Thanks. Uh, Crack and ass in the same sentence. That mean he's he's been celibate for many hours. Be careful. Yes. Hey, it sounds like it. What's up, Jim? Uh, my girlfriend is a traveling nurse, and she's working you know, in Atlanta. And she got a needle stick. She works in the ER from a guy who is uh, a heroin addict. Uh huh. And uh, she's not going to know for about a week, I guess, the results of of his test for mm -hmm. HIV. Mm-hmm. Um, what she, like, what are the implications for, for us? Like, how reliable is that test? That, that, um, it was very reliable. Which one is she getting? Well, they're testing his blood first, I guess. All right, yeah. look, here's the bigger concern is hepatitis C. Okay. Which is extremely uncommon. Has she had the hepatitis B vaccine? I, you know, I don't know. Is she, did she, did they give her anything after the needle stick? No. No, no vaccines, no, no nothing. No, no vaccine. They, they did a report, and um, I guess there's a immunologist going to look at All right, good. Like, the whole situation. All right. As, it, a, it, as a nurse, don't they give you that vaccination? Well, she's probably, have to, she must have had hepatitis B vaccine. It should be up to date, but hepatitis C is the bigger issue. That's the one that's so common right now, and, it, and it, it's contagious, but HIV is not typically transmitted this way yeah, yeah to make you feel better and and i'm not as expert on this as drew but from my understanding there are tens of thousands of needle stick incidents as a year in hospitals and the out the, the um Transmit disease the transmission of, of of actual disease is is so minimal as to be statistically non-existent and with aids for instance there have been several um thousand maybe tens of thousands of needle stick incidents and there's only one case of a nurse claiming she got aids um she did apparently get hiv then it may have been through that needle stick but she went on uh, antivirals and got very sick from that uh, one even if she was transmitted the, the odds are very 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 light all right so uh that's the good news don't fret lily hi you're 15 you're interested in a 24 year old co co-worker yeah. Yeah. What kind of place you work at? It's telemarketing. I see. Telemarketing. Yeah. What are you doing there at fifteen? I'm sorry. What are you, what are you doing there at fifteen? Yeah, what are you selling? Um, 
actually, we don't have to sell anything at surveys and stuff like that. Oh, I see. Well, so this is a part-time job for you, or you're out of school, or what? No, I'm, I, like, have to pay bills and all that. This voice doesn't, uh... Oh, boy. Yeah, you got that little girl voice. Ever <laughs> molested? No, actually, I wasn't. No? Never no. An alcoholic dad? No. Oh, you there? But, yeah, I'm here. No physical abuse? Yeah, there you kind go. of, sort of, but I'm out of the house, you know. Yeah, I but you're... you're my life together and you're, got to graduate. You know? You're out of the house at 15? Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to school? You're out of school and everything? Well, I am going to be in a couple months. I did homeschool. Okay. And so I caught up on everything, but what I wanted to know, you know, like, I haven't done anything with him. I haven't even yes. gone out with him. Good. You're not going to... Yeah. Listen to me, Lily. He's going to be abusive. Don't hook up with this guy. You're 15. And I know you're living the life of an adult, but your vagina is only 15. <laughs> okay. Let's not rush it to an early And your break. psyche's 15. Right. Yeah. Right. No, our psyche's 6. Right. Right. Listen to her voice. Yeah. Okay. All right, slow down. You're doing great. Okay. Don't veer from the course now. Right. Okay. Into the into the intercourse. You know what I'm You're going to get in trouble. comment on a 24-year-old who wants to be with a 15-year-old. Well, there we are again. There are lots of them. Lots of them. Yes. Listen, ladies, all fundamentally flawed. Understand that. Period. We'll be back. Been here oh, and uh, being Thanks, so guys. compelling and forthright and uh, always... Uh, always Lighting up the mics. Always an interesting yeah. time. And uh, come back anytime. Thanks, guys. I'd we'll, love to. Uh, I have fun with this. We uh, do appreciate you being here. Again, uh, gear, everyone. You want to uh, read a good magazine, that's the one to read. And until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo.